Hi there, everyone. Soulsor17 here. And if you're wondering, where have I been? Schoolwork has been a pain. And I just was like, I lost motivation, kind of. It was like I just needed to relax and recoup. And yes, I know. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I needed to do that, but it had to be done. And schoolwork was just being a real pain. I couldn't do anything because... My power went out for like two weeks. First, it was a storm we had in PA. I don't know when, but for some reason, um, light. It was like lightning out. So something hit. Lightning hit transmission boxes for electricity. And you know, basically, a tree also went down for power lines. Plus, it also hit like. Their transmission box for the electricity. I think I'm getting that right. Found then, yeah, basically that happened. They it didn't come on till like Monday or Tuesday. Then the, my um then our uh, oven in my house or well, my parents' house went. It blew a fuse and I had to wait till that power situation came back. And then, well, I just kept on trying to focus on schoolwork, and uh, I was kind of just failing, so, yay. Anyways, so, I am going to be making multiple new what-ifs, alright? I'm making more new ones, um, well, as an apology, I'm making some new ones, taking a break from the Naruto what-if, I'm only gonna make two new ones. Um, this one, some people said they didn't want. But here's the thing: it's my channel. If I want to make one, you know, of Deku become a Power Ranger, yeah, I'm gonna make it. I'm sorry. Um, just please understand. Just watch it, see it, and um, yeah. The Goro Naruto is gonna come back. Don't worry. I just have to focus on some schoolwork. And I've been playing Call of Duty, the newer one, um, Warzone, and Cold War 2, basically. Um, I've been playing zombie mode with my friend, so we, I beat two of the Easter eggs. One was today, the other one was last week. So, yeah, anyways. That's what happened. But anyway, so let me just give you a few details. Well, actually, let's just say this. This is what if Deku became a Power Ranger, part one. Alright. So, in this what if. The light, you know, basically, if you've watched Lost Galaxy, you know the plot and why Scorpion, or Scorpius? Her name just pronounced. That's why I wrote it down, so please give me a minute to look at it. Um... Oh, hold on. Okay, yep, I was right. It was Scorpius, basically. And his army, plus his daughter, Trakina. Yeah, Trakina, basically, are trying to get the lights of Orion. This power source, basically, to give you unknown, well, basically, untapped power. Not like it's unlimited, it just gives you, like, a, a basically, a power boost. Give you more power. Basically, well, he wants to rule the universe. So, if you know Lost Galaxy, you know what happens. But basically, this is going away from the plot of that. It's basically changing it, and the lights of Orion leave the Power Rangers in this one. And they're traveling all the way over to oh, Earth. Basically, it's not in the same galaxy as where Lost the TV show Lost the Galaxy Power Rangers are taking place. So, the Magnet Defender, who is in the picture right next to Izuku, to your, well, left or right, <laughs> you know, basically is gonna be who Izuku will become, basically. Um, he leaves after getting rid of Mike. Basically, he leaves Mike out, you know, basically, like, how can I say this? The Magnet Defender had basically Mike as a vessel, but he was in the control. So he released Mike, you know, from his imprisonment, 
and basically he tra he gets onto a ship and travels. So basically Scorpius army follows, but the Magnum Defender is quicker because the ship is faster. So this is where the story is taking place. The Power Rangers don't know what to do, but they're glad that that Terra Venture is not going to be attacked no more. Um, yes, yeah, some of the enemies from the Magnet Defender has, like, you know, basically been destroyed. But one character has is that is around is basically Furio. Basically the guy who turned a place into stone. Um, he's still around. He had a brother who basically that died from the Power Rangers. Alright, okay. So anyways, let's get on to this. This is, like I said, you know, that. And, yeah, so. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention. Someone's going to be taking place of one character. Well, two. Um, in My Hero Academia. Or should I say in UA. So, yeah. Anyways, let's continue. Because this is not going with anything from... This is my, my own story. I am making my own story. Just doing what I think will be good. So, yes. Anyways, okay. Sorry for me rambling on. But, eh. eh. <laughs> like the old times. <laughs> Eesh. Alright, so. Let's go on. So, we're starting off. Izuku's finding out he's quirkless. Um, Inko is, you know, upset. The same thing happens in this one. You know, the same thing, like, she says, I'm sorry. So... You know, over the years, Izuku has been furious with Bakugo. He does not like Bakugo, nor does he think of him as a friend. Just an acquaintance, that is all. He does not think of him, He and he only says the word, you know, the, the nickname Kachan, because he doesn't want no Bakugo to think that he, you know, is looking down on him as he... You know, as what, you know, people will think. Or Bako will think. So he pretends to be the punching bag because Izuku has taken, you know, different classes. Karate. Basically, yeah, Inko knows about he's in karate. Ten... Kwan... Uh, kwan uh, I'm trying to say the name right. Ten Kwan Do? And Mixed Martial Arts. And maybe a little bit of boxing. Yes, Izuku takes these. Because Inko is a very overprotective mother in this one. Like, I mean, extremely overprotected. So until the boxing classes were done, Inko became less. But she is still a worried mother because Izuku wants to be a hero. Uh, not only to Izuku, Inko does not want him to be a hero. She just wants him to be safe. That is all. So this is how Inko is, so just to be just as a warning for any people who like, you know, who think Inko is a good mom, she is still a good mother in this one, but an overprotective one. So something's gonna happen. Foreshadowing. Yes. Alright, almost not a bit almost not a freaking jerk in this one. So yeah. So anyways. We're gonna start off in middle school. So when Izuku's in school, everything goes to canon. So when Bakugo slams his head on the desk, he, you know, that whole entire thing where everyone starts, you know, laughing and Bakugo is just, you know, looking all menacing in the scene. But in this case, Izuku finally stops to act. You know, his act. He goes like, <laughs> Why, thank you, Katsuki Bakugo. I mean, that was one hell of a performance, really. And everyone is shocked by this. Even Bakugo and the teacher. And Izuku gets up, dust off himself. He is like, ah, For two years I had to deal with your crap. All of you. Especially you. As he points to his teacher, he goes like, You not doing nothing. You're supposed to be the homeroom teacher? Wow. <laughs> I feel honored to have such a teacher like you. Basically, the teacher's like, doesn't know what to do, basically, he's like, uh, uh, what? What's going on? And Zuku just starts walking over to a bookshelf. That's, that was not in the school, was not in the TV, you know, the anime, but in this case, that's in my version. 
you know, because Izuku built it. <laughs> he built this bookshelf. He asked the principal if he could put one in his class. He was allowed to, unknowingly to the principal or anyone in his class, Izuku hid a hidden camera, basically, into the wall of the school and, well, basically made a hole in, like, the bookshelf holder and had a camera there hidden behind some books, but... Well, it looks like it's hidden, but it's really, it's a part of the books. So it gets like a full-on view of the you know, classroom. And then he removes the section where the camera is. Like, how can I say this? Pretend the book. You see something, just like a something, a like a little gap of a circle there. You know, like, how can I say this right? Okay, so the books, there's like five books each. And there's like a little gap in between. That's where... the that's where the camera is. But unknowingly, they basically, when Izuku moves them apart, they see a freaking camera there, like full on. Like, the one of the books was the camera. <gasps> they just didn't notice. No one noticed. And Izuku just says like this. I've been videotaping this for two years of all of this. All of your insults. All of your name calling. All of your bullying and, well... Quirk usage, Bakugo. I mean, it's against the law to use your quirk without a license. You know? As Bakugo's like, what? You, what do you mean, you damn nerd? He's like, oh, come on. You want to be a hero so badly, you have to learn the laws. I mean, for a quirkless person such as myself, that's only logical to know. Because I don't have a quirk, and... Hence, if I ever be harassed, I could technically have them arrested. As Baku goes in shock, even the teachers and the students, as Baku says, well, it doesn't matter if you tell anyone, because I just, you know, I mean, nah. he just basically says, I'll explode you, you damn nerd. As Zuku's holding his phone, he goes like, you even try to lay a hand on me. This video, all for two years, will... Well, has already been transferred to my phone, basically, and I even, and I edited it, tweaked it a little already, and well, it's the finished product, so it'll be sent to the principal's office and go worldwide, actually, and everyone will see how much of a fake hero you are, and everyone here. And how society is treating someone as pathetic as me, as you say. Isn't that right? Bakugo. Which, Bakugo kind of hesitates a little, because he always says Kachan, so... Yeah, as basically one of the students says, You're lying! <laughs> you won't do it! You're too much of a chicken to do! As the teacher tries goes, Yeah, you are! Now, sit down, Izuku Midoriya! Get rid of the video and we can go on for a day as Bakugo chimes in and was like, Die, Deku! As like when he jumps, Izuku presses the button as Bakugo saw everyone else. And Izuku says, I wasn't bluffing. He moves out of the way. Bakugo hits the camera and explodes it and goes like, The camera had no use anymore, so it was going to be destroyed anyways. Thank you for doing my work for me. Now then, shall we get along with our class? <laughs> Fellow classmates. As he says with a little bit of disgust and hatred in his voice. And a little bit of venom. As he looks at Bakugo and he was like, oh. Yeah, I forgot something. As when Bakugo turns around and goes, what? As he gets a fist right into his face. Basically breaking his nose and making it bleed. As he goes like, that's for the bullying. Believe me, if I wanted to punch even harder, I could. Basically, Izuku's almost in the level of superhuman. It's just he needs a few more years to become that level. So, and his face, his nose is definitely broken. Like, and like, how can I say this? Bent the wrong way. So Mako's gonna need something done for that. As Mako's like, my nose! 
what the hell, Deku? And he's like, my name is Azuka Midoriya. As he does, like, he does what basically grabs Bakugo's collar. And then Bakugo thinks he's going to headbutt him. So he tries to use his, you know, quirk. And then he basically knees Bakugo in the stomach. And, well, Bakugo's, you know, basically didn't realize that was coming. So he got the full force. And he goes like, and don't forget it, Bakugo. As Zuko walks to his seat. And, well, he takes out his phone and he goes like, Oh, the principal should be here in three, two, one. As he points to the door, and the principal slams the door open. As he just looks at everyone in the classroom, he sees Bakugo on the ground, holding his stomach, blood dripping off his face. And then he looks at the, te the teacher, the homeroom teacher, and he goes, You. As the homeroom teacher goes, Me, sir? He was like, Whatever your name is. Get off school grounds, or I will have you arrested. He goes, but, but, I'm, I'm gonna teach this cut. He goes, like, you're not allowed here, you're fired. So, get your stuff, whoever you are, and get out. As the teacher starts arguing, the principal calls up the police. The, the, and basically, well, what happens is, though, I'm giving the principal be able to basically... Gain information fairly quickly. So he watched the video at top speed. And he knows who to fire. Who to not. In which that teacher. Of the homeroom teacher was arrested. Along with many other teachers that were in Zuku's class. Who saw the students pick on Zuku for being quirkless. Even Bako's bullying and did nothing. So. They were arrested. And well before the police get there. The, you know, the teacher looks at everyone. All the students. He says, I will call up every one of your parents and tell them that you are basically, you're allowed to come back to this school, but after a month of not being here. Well, actually, it's near the end of the school year, so but I'm saying they have still have two more months. So he he's going to get them not have them be in school. Expulsion? Expulsion? Basically, whatever you call it. Um, expelled? It's just like they're going to be in two months of school. I mean, you know, in two months of having school, they, they're not they gone for that one, you know, month. But their schoolwork is going to be sent home to them by, you know, eat, like, basically online. And, well, when everyone was asking why, he was like, Do you not realize that bullying a student for being quirkless technically... It is not a hero thing to do. Just because he's quirkless does not mean he is weak and pathetic. As one of the students who was Bako was going, he would say, What do you mean? Of course they are. They can't do anything. As the pr principal just sighs, it was like, My grandfather told me what quirkless people can do. And believe me, kid, or should I say boy, if they can do a lot more, Without a quirk. Then with one. And if that boy over there. Basically. Could you know. Do this. Then. You know basically. Have two years of footage. With no one knew this about it. And basically then. Be able to make a video. On uh, what you guys did to him. Believe me. The quirkless people. Are way more better than. Well. Way more better than. The new generation of. Heroes, as the principal looks at them, saying, if you ever become any. And basically, he looks at Bakugo and saying, <laughs> he's, basically, he just kind of chuckles at Bakugo. And when he leaves, he does call the parents. All the parents are furious with their kids. Mitsuki especially. He, he, the principal sent all the parents a video of what Izuku took. And so... When this happens, you know, when the parents come over and pick up their kids, the teachers are getting arrested of, you know, letting the students pick on Zuku because, well, they all of them use their quirks on him. Even if they weren't that strong, they used their quirks. Um, you know, the teachers didn't stop it. They didn't let Bako, they let Bako do what he wants. So the teachers get arrested and Bako's going to be into... Well, the, the basically the police, which you, you know, the police of you know chief, 
mean, the police chief here, said to Mitsuki, he can go to the rehab correction facility for his quirk and how to properly use it. He then, you know, cannot become a hero because of this is online. Which Bakugo's like, wait, what? And he was like, boy, Mr. Bakugo Kotsky, you use your quirk without a license for multiple years, probably even longer, thinking you're better. The world doesn't work like that. The footage is out. You have no chance of becoming a hero. Basically, Bako's career is ruined. If you guys say anything in the comments, oh, he should still. Um, yeah, worldwide. And showing how hero society in the next generation is going to be. People who don't have strong quirks, who rely on heroes. Um, you know, words, enough of them will basically cause a rift in society and well if you all know the current manga you know society how it really is it's on a tipping scale <laughs> japan's government owes azuku basically a lot well japan owes azuku a lot of um apology so yeah so basically izuku seeing the you know the day, it's like the whole entire day goes like that Basically, the whole entire thing that with that, with the, basically, Zuko watching the teachers being arrested if they don't leave school ground, the students' parents, you know, basically taking them home. Basically, um, Baku was walking away with Mitsuki while Mitsuki is yelling at him. Basically, the police, which are, you know, the police of chief, the chief's police, you know, policeman, the chief of police basically is. I don't know why I'm having trouble saying that name, well, word, because it's already 3 o'clock in the morning. Anyway, you know, it's in the room, like, in the room, well, again, Izuku. And he's like, yes? And, well, he says, Izuku Midoriya, please come with me. So, yeah. So, basically, if you guys are wondering what else the police policeman said to Bakugo, they said if he doesn't, he's going to go into Tartarus. Or Juvenile Correctional Facility. And he has to go to court counseling, basically. So, anyways, and like even getting, even going to counseling for his temper, and ego, and maybe most likely he will become a hero. But there's a likely chance he won't ever be able to. So yeah. So Baco's dream of becoming a hero ruined. <laughs> Am I going to use him for something else? Yes. Reasons why I thought it'd be kind of funny. Well, most likely, like, I was thinking of this a line, but it's a uh, Bako's a descendant of someone. I can't say who, but all the Power Rangers. Basically, here's the thing the world knows of the Power Rangers exist. Like, this Earth, is it Ku's planet? You know, basically, in this city, you know, in this what if. All the Power Rangers existed on this planet. So basically, the world has an actual Power Ranger funding if the buildings get destroyed. <laughs> so guess what that means? If the Power Rangers come back, and basically there's a big giant you know, Megazord and monster fight, the cities are good anywhere around the world. It's been all around the world. So yeah, and the world actually like knows... Since the, they're coming around the age of having no quirks, they know. They know the Power Rangers were around where there was no quirks, so <laughs> they're quirkless. And though, none of the kids believe that in the newer generation, just may I add. But, anyways, back to it. So, when Izuku leaves the um, chief of police, he gets into a room. He sees three people, basically, three government officials. Looking at Izuku with not no hatred nor anger at him, more of sadness and compassion. I'm uh, making this one the government still be the same, but when it comes to human, you know, to other people that are innocent and basically that are basically quirkless. Let's say in this one they have a couple of fan members that are quirkless and the same stuff happens to them and they try their best to help them out, but they fail. So let's just say in this one, they sympathize with him. So yes. So basically, 
the first government official stands up and bows his head. I'm not gonna give him a name, but he just says his name and just says, you know, please sit down. So, Izuku Midoriya, we're here to offer, well, not offer. That sounds like this is a bribe. <laughs> it's not. We're here to give you a gift. And Izuku was like, okay, what is it? Funding. Huh? Izuku's like, mind just went blank. He was like, funding for what? In the video that we saw, we did try to take it down. We can't. It reached 2 million, 2,000 reposts, likes, and comments are above anything we have ever seen. Basically, we can't take it down in Japan or anywhere, actually. So... <laughs> We have came to the conclusion that the school, the schools that you were at, we already looked up where they were, they are being closed down as we speak, basically. And what's going to happen to them is this. They are going to have a new school system where <sighs> he takes a deep breath in because he's trying to figure out how to say this right to not offend Izuku. So, he says it more like this. Sorry, I just have to do something real quick. Okay, sorry. Anyways, he says, these schools that allow the bullying to happen, to allow that boy to get that ego, we have looked into your past, we found them there to be in a shutdown. The school system, and all around Japan, probably in the world, will have anti quirk bullying laws. Say, if a student bully is a corkless person, they will get some degree of punishment, not by much, because they're still children. But, UA is, will see this and will basically most likely make a college for, well, for heroes. Say they still have the high school, but you do you do some hero work in high school, you do actually more hero work in college. And Izuku's like <laughs> Did one video really change the world that much? I never knew. And he looks like with a nonchalant face, like it doesn't matter to him. He does point out saying the world won't change in a day, nor a week, or a year. I take a couple of years for this all to subside, you know, basically to all that to come into fruition. It takes multiple years, unless you're willing to do it all real quick and sloppy. The government official nods no, basically. That was the next one. The next one saying, anyway, it's about the business at hand. Yes, the schools will be closed. New curriculum, a new curriculum, new curriculum. A new school system will be in place when they, by the end of the 10 months, basically. And, well, we're here to give you what we think is owed. <sighs> basically, money for all the things you have went through. Probably went through a lot of hospital bills. Izuku's not saying nothing. Because he wants to see where this is going. But he just asks, how much? They just say a very... Okay, imagine Momo's business. How much it costs. How much your know, family would cost, basically. Their network or whatever it will cost, basically. But times that by two. That much. And that's for life. But he doesn't... He gets that, like, a thousand every... Well, actually, a million every month. And Izuku just be like... Wait, 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 what? So the government... It's paying me an allowance for life. And they nod. He's like, uh, thanks? What's the catch? And they say it's no catch. Just here. Here's a credit card. Take the money. We're going to make you a bank account. Here's the information for it. There. Have fun, kid. Just don't do nothing stupid. And um, if you want to become a hero... Great. Just please be safe. 
where but we believe in you basically and these guys do they see the i mean they saw in the video that is a cool basically in his video they say all i wanted to do was become a hero and yet this happened to me and he that, that was like it like that's what he said at the beginning of the video and then two years worth of footage plays and yeah so while this you know after all of that this is then the school day happens Everyone heard what happened to the students in that room and the teachers. They all are kind of shocked that Izuku did that. Some kids can't believe it. Others are just kind of scared. And um, teachers are just kind of terrified because they don't know what they're next. But anyways, so Izuku, <laughs> he does this. And so when he goes down the same path... He's looking at the card that the government officials gave him, and he was like, Really? This much money? A, thousand, a million every month? Probably just lying. But I'll have to test it out. I have to see. So, he goes underneath the bridge. The sludge room is about to attack him. And before the sludge room could even do anything, he was like, Um, sir? Why are you attacking me? He was like, Uh, I'm a villain. He was Really? Yeah. Look at me. He's like, um, I don't see a villain. I mean, of course, you could be one because you're attacking me, but what's for that reason? He was like, um, I robbed the, I robbed the, you know, convenience store. He was like, okay. For what reason? Because I didn't have a job. For what reason? Because people called me a villain when I was younger. He was like, okay. Are you truly a villain? He was like, uh, Yes, he goes, no, you're broken. Now, come on, sit down, let's talk. And the soldier was like, huh? He was like, I'm in a pretty good mood today, so let's talk. And so the soldier was like, oh, okay, so what happens is when all my says, oh, I'm here a few minutes, you know, basically after a few minutes of them talking, he, the soldier goes like, and that's why I'm a villain. He was like, okay, so you had no, you know, place to live at all. Because you didn't have any money. So you stole money for many years just to get at place. Even in that place, they still call you a villain. But some people train you nicely. But still, you can tell they didn't really trust you or like you that much. Because of the way you look. And he goes, yes. So basically, you're doing all this villain stuff. Because you're trying to maybe find a way how to cure whatever's wrong with you. Plus, fix your quirk if it's broken or not. He's like, exactly, kid. He's like, okay. So... You're not a villain, you're just broken and very desperate. I don't see that as a villain, I just see that as someone who needs help. And All Might's like, <clears throat> I am here. And Mozuko's like, All Might. He is the same, same way, but he's more mellow out. So he's like, he says it like, you know, like, excited. It's like, All Might. You know, like that. But not like the cannon took away. The Sudgerlin is not running away. He gets up. He walks over to All Might. I mean, they did before. You know, All Might did came. He did say that. Okay, basically he did say okay. So maybe if you're arrested, you get your life sentence or your sentence lessened if you come willingly and such. And you just explain them to your story. Heck, even maybe someone can a pro hero can even find an agency or. Whatever, just to help you with your quirk. And the Sojourn then tells them a story. So yeah, so basically the Sojourn says, I'd like to come will willingly with you all night. He goes like, um, okay? What's the reason? He was like, the kid talked me into it. <laughs> and Izuku just nods and so. As well, the, the Sojourn second attack never happens. Um, all Might does look at Izuku. He goes like, well, there, young man. What is your name? He goes, Izuku Midoriya, sir. And, um, I do have a question for you. Before All Might can say anything, he was like, Night Rock, Raph. Even though I would like it, I am technically want to go home and tell my mom something. So please, can I ask you this question and be on my way? He's like, uh, sure. Since you asked so nicely, what is it, young man? I mean, young Midoriya? He was like, can a corkless person become a hero? All Might was about to say something of the lines of canon. But, he rethinks it because... He remembers himself was quirkless. He remembers that his, you know, himself had no power, no quirk. And so, he says this. 
Yes. You are quirkless. But does not does not that that does not mean you cannot be a hero. It would just take a lot of effort, work, and time. And a lot of support items. To truly you know, to truly be a hero in this day and age. It will be very difficult for you. But over time, you will be a great hero. Maybe not number ten in the top tens, but even maybe in the top twenties or thirties or forties. Is all how much time and effort you put into it, young Midoriya. Now, let me say this again. You can become a hero. And so, Izuku is happy. He's a side. He thinks All Might. He runs away. So, All Might and the side villain are basically walking. And All Might forgot, well, his time limit. He said, like, my time limit. And then he looks at the side villain and he says, can you please keep this a secret? And he goes like, uh, sure. What is it? As on he debuffs, he was like, wait, are you? He was like, yes, I am All Might. And then he explains just the awful one thing and, you know, what, ha how, what happened to him. And he's like, okay, so time limit, all for one. Yeah, I'm not going to tell no one. That's your personal stuff, man. I mean, I can't sell for information, but hey, if I get help from my quirk, then, you know, basically not be whatever, find out what's wrong with it, then it's fine by me. And all my nods. So when they get there near the basically a building away from the police station, Dull Might says, How about this? For your last, you know, drink from in the outside world, about it's my treat. And the Sergeant goes like, Wait, really? He was like, Yes, come on. And so they go to the bar basically. The, everyone's kinda worried, but you know, the bartender says, What can I get for you fellas? All Might says, Um, water and basically, the sludge one says, just a basically type of drink. And yeah, so basically, while they're talking, just like old pals, they, you know, they see on the news, multiple school buildings, even a, even a preschool has been shut down. Multiple people have lost their jobs. The middle school, such and such, has, you know, the principal has given an announcement. And then it goes like this. We are shutting down our school for the next, well, 10 months to redefine, you know, redefine it. To basically make sure anyone who is quirkless in the years to come will have a place in this school and every other school. We are figuring out rules for quirkless people, well, quirkless kids to have a place in the school to be non-worried and stress-free and be safe. If you saw the video, it is by this young man, as they show, show Izuku Midoriya's face, has been bullied all his life in that video. So please understand, if you, if you have watched it, this needs to change. Our school system needs to change. And the next generation of heroes need to change. So, when All My sees this, even the Slender Villain, that's just shocking to them that the boy that they just saw... Did this so Izuku, you know, um, well, not yet, but anyways, so like, Izuku's running home, and this this was on broadcast on TV. All my and the soldier goes, like, That kid just no, how? And then they said two years worth of footage that he has recorded. Yes, it was in the classroom, but here's the thing they were bullying him, he, he was trying to protect himself. and he had enough of them. It may have gone on for years to bullying. When someone has enough of it, it's enough. So, I mean, technically, Izuku, if it, you know, was like a law against it, he could be charged. But technically, since he was bullied to such extremes, like in canon, his life was basically hell. They don't do anything. They can't do anything. He was in the right. So, yeah. So, anyways. So, when Izuku gets home... Inko didn't see the news. You know, he's like all happy. Inko asks what happened. And he just tells her what he did. What All Might told him. And then saying he's going to train to become a hero. And this is when Inko says these lines. Sweetie, I don't want you to become a hero. And he's like, uh, what? Well, why? Because it's too dangerous. 
I don't want you to get hurt. I don't want you to die. And she just goes on and on about all the things that could happen to him. And Izuku just gets furious at his mom. He basically is mad. And from this anger, he, you know, he just says, I'm going to become a hero. And she goes, as long as you're in my house, my rules. If you even try to apply to, you know, to UA, which I know you did, you're not allowed to go to UA at all. You're going to go to a regular high school and become, you know, get a normal job. And Izuku goes, fine. Have it your way then, mom. As he walks through his room. Well, yeah, basically walks. And he just packs up all his things that he can carry in a bag. Basically, Izuku has this, you know, unknown. He didn't tell her about the whole entire, like, cash, money, credit card thing. So, he... He was a he was gonna tell her said oh yeah and then she says I don't want you to become a hero so he packs up a bag full of clothing and just be like and basically he wears his normal clothes he's not gonna go to school because he has a because there's like ten months of no school so yeah but anyways so Inko's watching TV and she just hears his door closed again and just she sees him with normal clothes on walking out she asks where are you going sweetie and he goes like. I'm leaving, Inko. And she's like, uh, what? He goes like, your house? Well, not your house. You, you basically, it's an apartment. But if I live underneath your roof, I can't become a hero. So, I decided to leave. Keep any, sell off all my All Might merch. There's a little, some rare items in there. So, <laughs> that's all the money I owe you, plus some. So... Bye, Inko. As you know, she tries to get up and try to stop Izuku, but it's kind of too late. He already walked out the door. And Inko does start crying because she pushed Izuku away. He wants to become a hero that badly, she thinks. Just, if she goes against, you know, his wishes, he would do this. She kind of plays it. She kind of did say, you know, kind of try to crush his dreams right there, but he wouldn't take it. So Izuku... Basically, we're going to his, you know, walking away. He's like, uh, where am I going to stay? I know I left out of anger still. I ain't going to. I'm going to become a hero no matter what. Even if I have to try. And I forgot to tell you all something. I forgot to tell you all something. I wanted to keep this a little bit of a secret. But Izuku was born of a quirk. But so dormant, in fact, that even the systems could not tell. And his quirk is called a Lost Galaxy. <laughs> a reference right there, but anyways. His quirk allows him to draw any source of power from the universe. You know, basically, any power that is out there in space, say, like, the lights of Orion, will be drawn to him. <clears throat> yes, basically. So, while the lights of Orion's, you know, is traveling towards throughout the galaxy into the mo into the universes, it went to his, you know, basically the normal really Earth universe, and the Magnum Defenders closing in on them. Scorpion, basically, his ship fires a laser at the Magnum Defenders ship. He's like, no, shit, you know, basically, it's gonna crash. It, and basically, you know, he's trying to make sure the ship doesn't crash into the sea, anywhere else, and, well, while the ship is falling, like, you know, crashing down into the Earth, Izuku can see it. The lights of Orion are drawn to Izuku's, basically, quirk. It, his quirk activates. Basically, there is no indication. It just activates, and basically, all of a sudden, right when Scorpion shit was gonna get the lights of Orion, it just, like... It just, basically, yes. In a snap of a finger, it blitzes light speeds all the way down to Earth. They don't know where it went or what happened, but it all of a sudden, it just was going so fast, Izuku couldn't even tell. He's just focusing on the ship. It basically, Izuku's body absorbs the lights of Orion. But while the ship is going down, he's like, what the? Is that a, is that a star? No. Is that a meteor? So, when the ship does crash on a hill that's 20 minutes away, Izuku just like, wait, there has to be someone you know, in danger. He just bolts over at top speed. And his speed, 
Okay, say I said 20 minutes to get there. Izuku gets there in 5. <laughs> he gets there in 5 minutes. Running at top speed and, well... I'm just kidding. But anyways, so he's like wondering, wait, what the... How did I... It doesn't matter. So he just gets over to the ship. He sees you know, the cop... Yeah, the cockpit, basically. Um, I was trying to rethink what it was called, but basically... It's where they saw, you know, it's like a jet. Basically, the Mad Defender's plane was like a jet. Basically, there's only one seat. So, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, I know I stopped mid away, so I think I was trying to say something like that. But basically, I'm trying to say what a ship would, you know, basically be like an airplane. Well, airplane. I call it a spaceship. The same thing like airplane. So, anyways. Uh, you know what I mean. Basically, that place where... He sits in it. I, I just realized, so I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I think I forgot to say. I do not own these pictures, and this is not pay video. <laughs> Jeez, I said that way too I, I did not say that. Okay. So, yeah. But anyway, so Zuku sees it, basically the hatch up to the, well, the pilot seat is open, and he sees a man in there in a weird suit. So Zuku gets him there, you know, gets him and just... Pulls him out, and well, you know, gets him at a safe distance, and the you know ship explodes. As it goes, like, sir, are you okay? Okay, nor that. Sorry, I almost dropped my phone. But anyways, he's like, you, you, I don't have much time. Here, t take my sword. And he goes like, what? What do you mean? He was like, take it and take my power with you. And he's like, huh? What? The sword holds, basically, as I learned from the TV show and from a little bit of explanation, just wants to point that out, the sword holds all the Magna Defender's power. So basically, when Izuku, you know, when the Magna Defender forces his, you know, hit, basically his Magna, Def, Magna Sword, basically his actual sword, what's in the picture, is, you know, into Izuku's hands, Izuku gets two morphers appear on his wrist. And he was like, what the, what are these? These are morphers for you to transform into the Magna Defender. Complete my mission. Please. Fight, fight Scorpion and his troops. Defeat them to protect your world. And find the lights of Orion. Basically, Enzuku's like, wait, what? What what do you mean? Lights of Orion? Scorpion? Army? And what? You know. I, in my last moments, I'll transfer all my memories into the Morphers. As, you know, he grabs Azuku's wrist with the Morpher on it. As he, as a weird glow appears on to Azuku. So Morpher... As I, yes, I am adding a little bit of my own effect to it, just to point things out, because I want Azuku to understand what is happening and why this, you know, what's his mission. Well, what was the Magnet Defender's mission for or about? So, let's just say he can do this with a little bit of power that he has. So, if you're wondering, <clears throat> his Megazord, the, the you know, Torazord, yes, is going to, you know, it, it's going to be on Earth. Will be out. Will, will he use it much? No, because I'm not letting none of the freaking, you know, actual villains, grunts actually transform into the big giant monsters. But anyways, that's besides the point. So, Izuku <laughs> basically sees the Mag Defender, you know, doing this. He goes, and this is a bright green energy coming off of it. He's like, what the? What's going on? As he goes, you know, in his final breath, he goes. Now, become the Magna Defender for my si sakes. And, you know, and he dies and he fades away. Izuku seeing this just happen right in front of him. It's just like, what the? How? He was right here and... So, he takes a few moments to pause and process any everything. And he looks at the morpher, you know, and his, well, you know, he looks at the morphers, and he goes, the only way I can understand what he meant by his mission 
is to find out from this. So, he gets up. He basically throws the magnet, you know, sword up into the air. And he just, like, pulls the morpher out of for somehow not even knowing how it's done and just says magna power basically basically you know how there's like a flash drive and there's like a little slot for basically that flash drive little part to go into the slot yeah he does that and then he pulls and basically he has his wrist goes up in the air as all of a sudden if you watch uh, basically the Magna Defender transformation, look it up on YouTube, you know, basically, that happens. And Izuku then is transformed to the Magna Defender. Note, here's the thing, I am changing the look a little bit different. Imagine the Green Ranger, you know, look from the original Power Rangers. Tommy? Yeah. Tommy's look? From the green, the green Power Ranger, with the green Megazord, like dragon, you know, the green Power Ranger look, basically from the originals. Imagine that the mix with the Meg Defender look. So it's a little bit more. How can I say this? It looks like it because it's like to fit Azuku's body, basically, since he's smaller than what a Power Ranger would be and such. He's not an adult, so it, you know, it fits his look. So that's what I mean. And plus, it's the lights of Orion, too, that influenced it. To basically make him look like a mixture between Magna Defender's look and the Green Power Ranger look. So, I think that would be pretty cool. If you guys don't like it, oh well, I'm not gonna, you know, gonna fix it. Because that's only I think this will work. As Izuku basically looks at, you know, he still has the cave. He's, the show of powers are you know, a little bit less than, basically... He just looks at his outfit and he's like, whoa, this is cool. As basically, all of a sudden, he he finally hears sirens. He was too much in thought in hearing the Magna Defender's speech, or, well, his last words to him, to even notice. But the, he hears sirens and all of a sudden, he hears, you know, some a thud and he basically hears these words. I am here, villain. As he goes like, and Izuku just, like, stand there, looks at All Might. And, you know, basically, Izuku was looking at the crash site. But was right in front of the crash site, basically, looking at it. So his back is to All Might and the heroes. Basically, like, Endeavor and Mirako, even Aizawa. And so, he looks back at them. And for some reason, like, he has all the Magna Defender's memories. Battle style. You know, even some of the influence of him, his, you know, basically how he acts, you know, his act is. And Izuku already knows how to act, so he doesn't mind, you know, doing this. And he was like, me, a villain? In your dreams, heroes. Stay out of my way of my mission. I'm here to look for something. And I don't need you to get in my way. As Endeavor goes like, wherever it is, it doesn't matter. You're gonna get, you know, go to jail, basically. As he makes, like, what, what do you say, fire spears, and then all of a sudden, as he grabs his sheath, and, you know, basically his sword, his actual sword is sheathed, but here's the thing. It basically, the handle changes to become a plaster. He was like, I'm warning you, heroes. You even try to launch, you know, launch your attacks, and you even try to fight me. I won't hesitate to use force. As... Oh my, you know, well, almost kind of surprised because he has the long range on them. And Devers, like, tch. as I was trying to, basically, he's looking at basically Endeavor and All Might, as you know, and All Might notices this, so does basically Endeavor, as they can tell he's trying to use this quirk. But they look back and it's just not at it's just like not disappearing, nothing. So Miracle's like, wait, what? Why? What's happening? As basically. They raise their head, or as I'll just says, I don't know what his quirk is, and it doesn't look like it be deactivated. As Izuku just says, like I said, stay on my way, heroes. He puts though, his blaster to the side and just runs, basically. Aizawa, Endeavor, and Mirko have a hard time seeing him, but all Mike can see him. Izuku's not going at full speed. He thinks he is, but he's not. 
So All Might catches up to him. He was like, stop there, villain. As he says, Detroit smash. As then all of a sudden, Izuku stops it with his bare hand. As everyone is shot, even All Might. He said, and basically what happens is though, Izuku grabs, throws All Might over his shoulder, slams him into the ground. And I, he just says, I told you to get out of my way. As he runs and jumps off of the edge of the you know, edge of the you know the hill and well hill slash whatever cliff and basically lands five feet away like five blocks away from where the crash site was which all my endeavor and any other heroes just arrive on the scene seeing that are shocked and so what happens is though everyone Tries to find Izuku. He already de transformed and he's walking throughout the city. He doesn't know no one. But it doesn't matter, he thinks. He just he can just get into a hotel. But then sorry. Okay, so this is just gonna be a friend. So I just wanna point that out. And then he hears like some guys talking to this girl, an older girl, as she basically just telling them, No, I don't wanna come with you guys, I have to get home. As it's not that late, it's only like seven, so yeah. So basically, they're saying, like, Come on, let's have some fun. I mean, your family can't wait for dinner, right? We just want to talk to you. Well, we just want to have some, you know, get to know you a little bit more. Come on. As she's saying, No, I don't want you know, want to get to know you, and I don't know you in general. I have to get home and make dinner for my family. As one of the guys just says, Oh, that's enough. Come on. As he tries to, you know, drag, you know, grab her and drag her. Basically, it's basically they're just trying to hit on her, and she refuses to offer to go to a karaoke bar. Well, karaoke, I think bar or place, whatever. Doesn't do karaoke and drink. They refused. She refused because it was basically she's cooking dinner, and she needed a few ingredients that took like a couple, an hour or so to find. So, Izuku comes over. By the way, if you're wondering how big is his bag to have a full like. You know, um, basically he has equipment, he had equipment to basically fight, so, like, he, he has, like, mo basically, he can use anything to do with karate, nunchucks, bow staff, um, any type of weapon, basically, from there, um, so his bag is big enough to have, like, five to eight weeks of clothing in, because he folded them up tight enough, he... Basically, could see so, yeah. it. So he gets aware. He was like, "Hey," as these guys see him, and they're like eighteen years old. They like a kid. What do you want? He was like, "She said to leave her alone." So, listen to the lady and leave her alone. As they just look at us, you couldn't laugh. And like, what can a kid like you do? <laughs> and a scrawny one to be, you know, precise. As one of the guys come over to him and says, "Look, if you're trying to play hero." Don't. As he puts his hand on Izuku's shoulder and he says, So, listen to us, kid, and scram. As Izuku just grabs his wrist and with just a slight tension in his wrist, basically put on pressure, the guy can, is just on his knees screaming in pain and has, he goes, God, God, Where does this kid get the strength from? Izuku doesn't understand what happened, but for right now he can't really care. So, Izuku knows he has, like, right away knows this isn't his normal strength. He has to limit himself. So, the guy who was holding the Fumi's wrist lets go and runs over and says, Let go of my friend! And Izuku dodges and knees him with that gut, basically making the guy puke. And, well, this caused a ruckus to the point where the cops could, you know, come over. And before the cops came and say anything to Izuku, Fumi says, no, 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 well, yeah, it's Fumi, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I don't want you, I don't want, I just want to point it out right now, it's Fumi, honestly, I'm doing this on purpose, if you guys don't like it, too bad, basically, you know, Fumi says, don't worry, you know, he's fine, he was the one who was trying to save me, it's these two guys, who are not even give me a hassle, he just stepped in, you know, trying to have the, basically, police, leave right away so that way he doesn't get in trouble 
And yet the guy just do get off of a warning and may ask him if, they, if she wants anything to happen in like a little bit of rest time or something. She just says, just have them get away from me, that's all. So they score away from her and she you know, says to Izuku, that was very foolish of you and thank you. Um, he says, Izuku. She was, last name, he was like, don't want to use it right now. She was why? He was like, um... First off, as he looks down, like, the grocery bag that she had was, basically, all the food that she had, you know, she bought was in bags, so he was like, first off, let me help you with that. As he gets down and basically puts whatever bags went inside the other bag, and, you know, picks up and holds up her, he was like, here you go. She says, uh, thank you, because, <laughs> um, reasons for why I don't want to use my last name is because my mother. She was like, uh, why haven't you and your mother? He was like, um, he had an argument. More like, it was like a one-sided thing. I could have argued with her, but her look was determined to not let me. She was, what? Become a hero? She was, wait, what? Why? You must have a powerful quirk or a weak one, but still, you can't even try it. He was like, I'm quirkless. And Fumi then understands. But still, she goes like, Mom, that let me become a hero because you're quirkless? That's dangerous, reckless, and stupid for me to become a hero. Um, yeah. But here's the thing. It's my dream. It's the only thing I work towards. But now he's thinking in his head. I was like, yeah, but I'm not going to become a hero. I'm not going to go to the UA. I'm definitely not going to, well, do anything in particular becoming a hero besides fighting off where I have to fight. I had to process those memories first. So, um, Fumi does ask, are you, he goes, I left my home. I have nowhere to stay. I was, I do have some cash on me. I'm gonna just go to a basically um yeah by the way Izuku took pictures of the bank information and everything else you have the paperwork on him so don't worry but yeah so Izuku just says like you know I'm just gonna stay at a hotel and it's fine by me but if you and me being the kind hearted person be like you helped me so how about I help you you can come live with me well in my house for the night and we'll help you I'll help you find a place to live she was like, seriously? She goes, mm-hmm. What's the catch? She goes, no catch. She goes, sure. She goes, mm-hmm. She's like, okay. Fine by me. So, on the way, she gets to know him a little bit more. And she realized, I mean, he, well, she realized because what he just says, he took mixed martial arts, karate, taekwondo, taekwondo, and boxing. So, she basically realizing that, He's like, wow, that's a, a lot. Yeah, I know. And basically he says, I'm also working on one already. I still have to finish up. She goes, what? Jiu-Jitsu. She just stops in the place. He's like, you trying to learn a fifth? He was like, uh, yeah. She goes, wow, that's a lot of techniques. Yeah, I know. Anyways, um, where are we? He goes, oh. Around my house, he like says where she points to the door, and he basically realized we're in a rich part of the. the and she goes, "Oh yes, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Fumi Todoroki. It's nice to meet you, Suku." He's like, uh, uh, "Todoroki, <laughs> all right. Um, it's nice to meet you too, Fumi. So, I mean, if you mind me calling you that," he says as he's kind of depressed what he just said. And she goes, no, "We're friends, so." Again, anyways, um, come on. As she opens the door and he walks in, you know, with her. When they get in, she says, hello, it, hey guys, I'm home. Natsuo come, you know, sees her, he goes, Fumi, welcome home. Uh, who's the, she goes, oh, this is Izuku. And he's like, okay, he was, he's, needs a place to stay. He helps me out. And I offered to help him and try to find him a new place to live. Basically, he's like, okay, 
um, any other reason. He's here. He was like, well, like I said, he's homeless. He was currently homeless as of today. Well, this evening, actually. Had a home this morning. She, he was like, okay, um, do I need to know anything? Like, overprotective bird mode activation. She goes, no, he's fine. It's just, um, just, I'll explain everything. If I'm interrupting your guys' dinner, sorry, he does say. He was like, no, 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 it's fine, it's fine. You're not interrupting anything. So, you know, he meets Shoto not so early. He meets Sh Shoto Toroki early. Shoto just asks him, who is he? He just says, Zuku. Last name, he goes, don't want to say it right now. It's why he goes homeless and left my mom. Natsu was like, huh? Like, even Toroki's confused. So he just explains about his situation, what happened to him, and... Wait, then Natsu goes, wait, all this time I'm trying to figure out why you look so familiar. You're that kid from the news. Toroki's confused, so Natsu just explain what Izuku did. And Toroki looks at him. He goes like, you legit had that many schools taken down. All the way up to your middle school. And basically, start a whole time new curriculum for school. You're like, mm-hmm. Yep, pretty much. Toru Toru just puts the thumbs up, goes back to and like goes away to eat his cold soba. Natsu just says, <laughs> "Sorry about my brother not you know being excited all the time." He was like, "It's fine, really." Anyways, um, where's Fumi? Is then Fumi comes in with food. Um, Toru comes back with a cold soba. Oh, you know, basically both of like plates. And so they do eat. Um, they chat and talk. Then Endeavor comes in. He just sees Shoto and this kid he doesn't know that's not his kids. He's eating along with you know everyone else. He's like, uh, who is he? As Fumi just says, okay, by the way, I just want to point out Endeavor is the same way, but he is trying to talk to his kids more and visit his wife. Actually talking to her to, you know, just get, you know, their discussions. You know, trying to get foundation again. Of a, you know, basically just to start over. But anyway, so Fumi just says, Suzuku, he helped me out when I was coming back home. I bumped into two guys that were hit on me and tried to get me to a karaoke bar. I refused and... Um, all, you know, not for one, nor am I. I mean, Endeavor just stops her, and he goes like, I understand. Thank you for, for protecting my daughter, but do you... He goes, nope, I don't want anything out of it, and she already offered to help me out, try to find a place to stay, as Endeavor was like, huh? Wait, what? He goes, yep, she offered me a place to stay here for the night and help me out tomorrow. He's like, um, okay. Explain, and Zuka just tells him the story, and Endeavor's kind of surprised. He was like, "Yes, you can become a hero with just some with a lot of support items, and you already took this many, you know, you already have this many skills and martial arts underneath your belt, along with your taking jujitsu. So, yeah, you you pretty much can become a hero, kid. You have the skills for it, so and the discipline." He goes, exactly. Thank you for understanding, Endeavor. He's like, yeah. Anyways, um, Fumi, I'm just gonna, well, I'll be back in a few minutes. I'll come eat. And, you know, so he leaves. Shod Todoroki, or Shoto, was just quiet the entire time. And is it can tell. He does not like his father. He goes, like, <laughs> father issues? He goes, yeah. You? Don't know my father. He's like, huh? Never knew my father, so only was me and my mom. So I don't know how that is, but anyways, um, care to explain if you're comfortable? Um, just being curious. So, Taroki just looks at Zuko and just says, "Fine, I'll explain it." And he tells him about what happened to his, you know, how he got the scar, and he blames his father. And Zuko just says, "So you don't use all your power." Yes, I only use one side. He was like, okay, um, boy, 
just tell you the truth, that sounds so stupid. He's like, huh? Okay, so will you risk yourself to get frostbite? Even just like, you know, having one side of your body frozen completely. And then use your fire side. He's like, yes. For what reason? It's his flames. He was like, really? Does it come from him? Um, no, it comes from me. So, is it your, basically his flames don't come from him. They come from you, out of your own body. You know, from your own, you know, basically. Skin cells and everything, your flames basically just form. And yet, how does that come from him? Because it's his quirk. Who, but your quirk is fire and ice, correct? Like you said, you use your ice side, never use your fire side. He goes, yes. He's like, so technically, you're, it's two quirks merged into one to make a whole new quirk, which is your quirk. He goes, yes. So you don't use your fire side because you believe your fire side, your fire quirk is your is his quirk and not yours. He goes, yes. And then Tori would just realize, oh my god, I'm just, I'm stupid. He's like, exactly. Sorry, uh, Todoroki, but rethink your life choices. Anyways, thank you for the food for you and me. I'm gonna go and sleep on the couch. So, and that's what Azuku does. He sleeps on the couch, and well, after everyone just looking at Azuku, talking about him, everyone's just agreeing they like him. The next morning, um, Todoroki can hear someone. Basically, in the gym. It's basically Endeavor and Izuku fighting. Having a little sparring match. And, well... <gasps> it was Ende Endeavor trying to find out how strong was Izuku. And, basically... Oof. Endeavor getting his butt whipped. Not by much. But, still, getting his butt whipped. Because it's quirk... You know, just hand-to-hand -hand combat. No quirks. Totally shot by Izuku beating up his father. And, yeah. So, if you guys are wondering if there are going to be any, like, monster attacks... In this part, no, it's just the foundation of like Genozuku places and you know, stuff happening. So, yeah, but anyways, so after Zuku basically one sided kick in their butt, well, a little bit of a beatdown for Endeavor because <laughs> good match, and that makes 25 wins for me and only five losses. Endeavor's like, <sighs> you, hit, you hit like a truck. I like that. You know, I like that part. You know, basically your fighting styles, basically. Like, thanks. Trying to work on all the, my techniques to come into one, so. <laughs> Anyways. I'm gonna go make breakfast. Want some? So, yeah, uh, sure. So, when Zuko leaves, he sees Toroki. He goes, hey, Toroki. He says, uh, hey. He looks at him and he was like, did you just not use your quirk? He was like, exactly. I did not. And you lost... You won how many times? Seven. And out of those seven, he beat me... Well... 25 times. So tell me you had... How many matches? 32 matches. And you only won seven? He goes, exactly. Wow. That's... I know, insane. Anyways. Um... So, uh, and then Toroku says, I'm gonna need some help training my fireside before going to UA, so, do you mind helping me endeavor? He's like, sure, awkward moment, <laughs> you know, basically, Toroku and endeavor sinking. So yeah, after Zuka making breakfast, yeah, it's only something simple. But still, Fiumi was shocked and, you know, kind of happy someone else made breakfast. So, there's basically just surprise as it did that. And, well, so, after them eating, Fiumi and Zuku got right away to find a place. And they find, they do find a basically good place for Zuku to live. Good neighborhood, a lot of places around. And it's kind of like... It's basically close by to, you know, any places. Like, he can walk 10 minutes to a supermarket to basically... It's like... It has everything he needs. Technology, TVs, furniture, anything. So basically, it's just like... It's a small apartment for one person to sleep. And, you know, 
bathroom, kitchen, living room. And it's only like 250 yen. 2050 yen. Oh, no, 2,250 yen, which is who can pay that anyways, so, I mean, they basically go look at it, they did look at some other places, but they went with the 2,550 yen, because Zuku has multiple places to go to, so, yeah, and he does think for Yumi, like, Endeavor, Natsuo, and Taroki do help him get some stuff and move into the place, Endeavor just tells him that I will you know, like, to keep track of you, but are you becoming a hero? Izuka just says, right now, something came up, and he's just gonna probably do school online. He doesn't really trust schools anymore, so Endeavor understands that, and he just says, well, just let me know. So, you know, let me know if you need anything. Todoroki even, you know, nods at even Natsuo and Fumi. They do tell him it's he even though he was only there for one day, but if they, he he needs help anytime, just let us know. They'll come help him. Deku says thank you to them, and he does say he'll let them know. If you're wondering about the sword and the magna defender sword, um, it's with the transformation. Oh, you know, he just basically it will just appear whenever he needs it. But anyways, so um, Izuku. Basically, it did take it didn't take that long for them to find the stuff and move in. It was all nearby, so yeah. So, anyways, Izuku gets into his place and he's just you know excited. Meanwhile, while this was all happening, Scorpio, a Scorpion, a Scorpius, basically was telling his daughter Trakina that he says like. The lights of Orion went to that planet nearby. What's it called? Uh, Tricky Chakron. Chakron. And he's like, It's called Earth, sir. We don't know. Basically, this place is inhabited by humans with strange abilities. We don't know what they are, but we have to be careful. The lights of Orion can be anywhere with them. You know, they. Great, more insects. Send out a few of the men in a couple of days. We have to, well, how can I say this? We have to make sure we can survive as long as we can around here. You know, until we find them and go back to those Power Rangers and finish them off. And you know, Treacheron does not, and... Yeah, so, basically, this is what happened. So, for the next ten months, while this is all going on, Baku does try to apply to you. I mean, does try to get, you know... Get, they get a letter from, you know, UA. He gets a letter from UA saying he can't apply or join. Because of the, you know... But he did, along with the fact that, you know, he's in cork rehab and anger management counseling and such. He's is upset and he kind of is broken. Um, basically, Izuku just trains. He finishes um, jujitsu classes, and well, the Magna Defender has been. Known throughout the you know throughout the day and night, well, mostly at night. He's known like for the pet defending the weak, from the well the strong basically, the normal story which many heroes try to fight him and lose. No one knows how his you know he's able to even fight like that. How strong he is, and so. Basically, Izuku does realize it's the day of the UA exam. He wants to join, but he doesn't know how. So, all of a sudden, a package comes in. You know, he basically was thinking about going, but then, you know, the doorbell rings, a package comes in. It's from Endeavor. And, you know, basically, he's like, 
um, you know, the man says, sign here, please. He's like, okay. So Zuko signs, and what, you know, basically he gets the package, he, you know, brings it to his living room, he opens it up, and there's a card there. He, you know, it's from an Endeavor. He goes, Zuko, I know you said you, you were going to apply to a school for online. I already did that for you. So, it's a rich school, but you don't have to go to it. You could do everything for the next four years online. And so, don't worry. It's all going to be covered by me and my family. So, just enjoy yourself. Just do your schoolwork. And, well, just, you know, just making sure you keep up your grades. And, you know, Ziku sees the computer. He sees the books that he has. And along with, you know, a letter from the school saying, Welcome to Zuku. Um, he, basically, it does, it does say, like, Endeavor, it had to be, he had to be a part of family, so he just says, yes, this is my, well, sister's son. And my sister died, so I've been taking care of him, but he doesn't live with us. He doesn't trust us enough. He has trust issues, and he doesn't, he was bullied at school, so, and the school understood, so they say, Zuku Togoroki, and Zuku's like, Ugh. And he looks back at the letter and he says, P.S. I have to say you're my nephew. So, <laughs> there you go. And Zuko's like, <sighs> never. Whatever. So, anyways. So, Izuku basically reads on who they, we have accepted you into our online schooling. We have heard about your bullying and, well, and because, well, we saw what you did. Well, actually. No way. Yeah, even though it was broadcasted, um, they just so I mean, they did say Zuku Midoriya, but um, Endeavor said that's a cover-up name. So, we saw what you did, and we understand. You know, that you don't trust schools. So, please. You know, just finish all your scorecard on time, and, well, have a good year. Good four years have left. I mean, your four years in our school. Such and such. Welcome to it, basically. And Zuko's like, <laughs> wow. Uh, this is going to be different. So, I mean, he already has the Wi-Fi connection. You know, he has everything done already in the place. So, he hooks his computer to the Wi-Fi. And he realized this computer basically has a lot of storage on it. And he's wondering if he's going to have, like, a lot of different classes that can need a lot of memory. So... He's going to have to prioritize stuff. And he's even prioritized... Yep. Yeah, his money already. He didn't... Um, he did call the bank that has... It, you know... That basically has money. It does say he has $1 million in it. Um, he's... You know, says thank you. So he made a... Um, they send out... Like $1 million. He's going to keep track of it. And then so... Is it he says... This is going to be a good life. And yes, I know there's not a lot of action in this part because I'm trying to make the foundation of it. And yeah, so I do hope you guys enjoyed this video. You have a nice and have a nice day, night, wherever you are. And bye. I'm tired. I need some sleep. So anyways, bye everyone. And um, and video is gonna come out Thursday or tomorrow night of of a video of a new one of a Zuku. So anyways, bye.